optimize solutions today. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Ferracorp and, of course, to Stellaris, where we are currently exploring the uh, Ash Ike and Gifoth systems. Now, I've got it running on slow just so that we can uh, ha take our time as we're looking over our empire. We've got a bit of renaming to do. Oh my, yes. People were very, very giving of their names. Marvelous. You do realize that I'm going to get you killed in ridiculous numbers, but uh, you know, it's too late now. You've given me your names. So the first of all of our ships, the uh, um, Corvette missile ship shall be Isham. There we go, Isham. From henceforth, this is you. Uh, then the Dar Perillus can go. Oh, wait. Ah, hmm. Can I not just... Well, no. I'm probably just going to have to update to that design. Unfortunately, Planetary it's just the way it's going to work. Planetary habitable planets Ooh. are sometimes blocked, preventing their exploitation. Clearing a blocked feature takes time and costs minerals or energy credits, but the free space often makes it worthwhile. Indeed. And many blockers can actually cover a special feature. So always check that. It looks like we have to do that in a moment. But from now on, all further issues will just, you know, auto-update as we get better, better stuff. And Car Drenis, our railgun and laser-equipped corvette, shall be Zangiri. There you go, Zangiri. Welcome to the fleet. There we are. And pop, it is gone. Great, great, great. Now that does mean, more than likely, that uh, our little station here is going to get everything upgraded to... Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, just upgrade everything to whatever it is you particularly want to uh, upgrade it to. That's fine. Now then, the next thing we need to do is we need to have a look at our leaders, of which we have many. Admiral Trag, son of Utra, shall in fact be... Uh, should I keep the son of Utra? You know what, why not? Why not? You shall be Zerez. Zerez, son of Utra. There you go. We've got lots of son of... U U U well, no, actually, that's Utra and that's Utha. Ah, almost almost made a made a classic blunder there. My apologies. It's going to be very confusing. Ah, as much as I want to keep the son of Utra, it's eventually just going to become such a mouthful and I'm always going to be tripping over it. So no, alas, goodbye. Uh, Governor Vin, son of Upscaling complete. shall be, from henceforth, Travis. Nice and simple. Uh, Duke of the People is Travis. Let's take a, a simple name to engender trust amongst the simple people. Uh, next up, we have Bubbles. Bubbles the Scientist. Welcome, Bubbles. Hopefully, you can lead us to greatness. And next, we have Plumbus Mac. There you go. And Vin, daughter of Rakan, shall, in fact, be Lambusado. I hope that is an L. You did say in your name, all lowercase. So I'm assuming that's because the L could be taken as an uppercase I. So you were just letting me know. But if that is wrong, uh, well, too late now. That is your name. <laughs> I have decided it is your name now. Masada, and finally, Lab, son of Adele, another shall in fact be... Oh. galactic ambitions has been dealt with. That tile blocker never stood a chance. Hooray! We accidentally did something good. Excellent. Fully upgraded. And Lab, son of Adele, shall in fact be Lord... Twifflebat. Don't ask. I don't. I, I've learned not to. There we go. <laughs> Welcome, Lord Twiffleband. Uh, okay, so, uh, we've got a bunch of things to have looked through. We've got anomalies, system survey, that's great, great. Uh, fleet upgraded, first star order fleet has been fully upgraded. Marvellous, let's go and have a look at you. It's probably all going to be Zangir class, yes. They're, they're all the same ships. So, we've got a couple of things that we might want to do. What are your orders at the moment? You're going to continue uh, heading out. And getting a few things done. That's that's fine then. Uh, I may I may rename some of these ships, but because I can't rename the classes, ah, oh, you know what? Sure, we probably should. But CK Carmuntis shall from henceforth be known as this the sorry CK the FC Math Machine 
which Remarkable. I think is... Ooh. We have discovered spacefaring alien entities oh that may or may not be intelligent, but let's face it, probably are. Okay. Their true nature will remain a mystery to us until we complete the appropriate project to investigate them. How marvelous. I suggest we do so post haste, lest they investigate us first. I agree with this. Mostly because we could sell the things to them. Oh, happy days. Evading hostile fleet. Science ship FC and Navidis has encountered a hostile alien space station fleet in Wallace and is currently attempting to evade them. Okay. We've encountered space some form of alien vessels in the Wallace system. These strange objects have been flagged as alpha aliens. Interesting. The Ferrocorp Free Traders has finally encountered fellow wanderers amongst the stars. Despite their intentions being unknown and potentially even hostile, the atmosphere on Neath, following the report from our contact, uh, sorry, contact fleet, can best be described as rapturous. Marvellous. I pause that right there. First thing we want to do, as Veer mentioned, it's possible that we might not get to this one first. They might be able to do it faster than us, and that's because... It's going to take 500 society research to discover the alpha aliens. If we can manage to do that, we will get influence or a special project, depending on what it is. Let's go ahead and research that straight away. Furthermore, we can jump into the system and have a quick look. Okay, I can tell you right now that this is not another normal... Ah, uh, no, I, I know exactly what this is. <laughs> uh, I can tell from the uh, derelict look of their... The kind, of, kind of hodgepodge look of their, their ships. Well, we have an interesting neighbor. A neighbor that I frankly wish we didn't have, but oh well. <laughs> that may be unfortunate for us, frankly. Maybe quite unfortunate because they're right next to us. Only one system jumps out. Ooh, okay. I will I will hold off on saying what I think it is, but uh, I'm fairly certain that we've got uh, <laughs> got a not particularly nice neighbor. Let's just put it that way. And the FC. Let's get you in there. Mad cat. There we are. That's, those are our science ships. Marvelous. Evading competitive <sighs> fleet. Yes, please. Get out of there before the competitive fleet gets over to you. That would be, generally speaking, quite bad. Uh, we'll go back to normal speed. Right, there we are. Uh, you should be heading up there to do a little bit more research. Marvelous. Right, well, one thing we can do right now is we can have a look at edicts. Now, edicts are basically kind of system-wide um, modifiers that we pay for, generally with influence, but as you can see, there are now lots of other edicts that we can put on there. The one I'm going to go for right now is going to last for 13 years. It's reasonable. It is going to allow us not just to be able to survey faster, which is a big boon, early on in the game, but have a better chance of discovering anomalies. And that is a massive boom early in the game. Uh, generally because it gives us a good chance of getting extra research. And we desperately need that. Desperately. Right. Let's go and check out Neath. We have got a new station that we can get. That's grand, I must say. I like it a lot. Well, what's our population at right now? Excellent. We've got exactly the right amount of population. Uh, stability is still going good. Approval rating. Hmm. Our rulers and our specialists have got uh, got a lot more clout. Their opinion of us matters more than the workers. It depends a little bit on the on the overall rights and living the standard of living that, that we've uh, looked into. And we'll probably check that out in a little bit. But for now, I think what I really, really want is... Uh, more research, frankly. That's what I really, really want. Hmm, how are we doing for consumer goods? Yeah, we're generally doing all right with those. I'm going to save up for the uh, research labs if we can. Uh, so let's let's get rid of those. We did have a leader gain a level up. It's not something we need to worry about too much right now, though. But for the time being, oh, this is going to be a bit of a potch for us. How's things going over here? How, how's your uh, searching of this, this area? Generally, going okay. We are 49%. Of the way through. Okay, well, it looks like we've got a bit of a weight on our hands. Uh, our construction ship is currently not doing anything. I'm sort of likely to be doing something more. I could wait. Mm. See, I could spend a lot of my minerals getting this, or I could wait for Neath. I'm going to wait for Neath to have enough uh, enough minerals stockpiled 
to build a research lab. I think that's more important to me right now. Getting an early tech lead, very, very important. Because one thing that seems to be the case with Megacorps, I haven't played enough to really have a solid idea of whether this is the case or not, but from what I've seen, Market I think Megacorps tend to uh, favor tall empires rather than wi uh, wide empires. That means a smaller overall empire, but with much more heavily developed infrastructure. We've got an anomaly uh, with relative, uh, sorry, routine difficulty, okay. Scans indicate the presence of a foreign alien-made object on one of Zeta retu uh, Reticuli 5's many frozen mountain tops. Well, then research it, please. I think that would be grand. Uh, we've got another experience game. Fantastic. Our scientists are doing well. Oh, I've just noticed we can indeed finally build our research lab. Let's get that going. Please and indeed thank you. There we are. This will give us a little bit of uh, more stuff to play with. Uh, I mean, we could unlock these. I don't need to yet, though. So I'm going to hold off on that. There's really no particular rush on that one. Once we've got a thousand food, I am going to be increasing the, the birth rate on Neath. Population growth is a massive thing now. Much bigger, much a much bigger deal than it used to be, from what I can tell. But it looks like we're just going to pass a little bit of time to uh, gather the materials and just start building around here. Oh, we're not, in fact. We are going to get to do something with traditions. Marvellous. Now, we've already opened up Discovery, so we've gotten the initial uh, help with Discovery, which is uh, the adoption effect of anomaly research speed is increased by 20%. Now we can decide what else we want to do. Survey speed increased by 35%, and science ship disengaged chance increased by 50%. That's a big one. Uh, research alternatives increased by one, and scientist level crap increased by two. Let's just have a quick look at our leaders. Uh, we're nowhere near the level cap. Well, actually, you might not be that far off, to be perfectly honest. Uh, no, of five. Yeah, we don't need that level cap right now. I think I would prefer you to be able to get your job done faster and thus possibly gain more experience. Also, that is going to eventually lead us to getting more science from our research station outposts that we've been building around the place. So anything built in a system that would, for example, uh, gather this three physics would gain 3.3, so on, so forth. So that's not a bad one either. A whiff of something. The FC Mad Cat is recovered an elongated metal box from the surface of Zeta Reticu uh, Reticuli 5. Clusters of small perforations on the five sides lead science officer uh, Masada to believe it is not a container, but some sort of aerosol dispersal device. Initial tests seem to confirm their suspicion as trace aromatics still emanate from the object. A special project has been issued to confirm whether this might be an information carrying device constructed by some alien race communicating primarily through the secretion and reception of atmosphere borne chemical compounds or smells. Malodorous. <laughs> I Situation love that word. A fantastic word. Okay, we have all, in terms of anomalies, we're doing well there. We are most of the way through this one. I need one scientist in orbit perform this particular research and you know what go ahead and do that if you hold down shift and control it will insert the order ahead of everything else i believe if you just hold down shift it'll insert the order after you've completed everything but by holding down control you're saying instead of putting this at the end of your order queue put it at the start of your order queue and it's very very useful for that specific reason right there i am particularly fond of using that to just uh, get a little bit of uh, an anomaly special research project sooner. actualized the box is indeed a document of a sort. Science officer Masada admits that they have been hoping for a, histor a historical record of some other kind of codex significant to whatever culture left it behind, but they were apparently disappointed. The true nature of the aromatic box seems to be a collection of fairly short narratives which, going by the rapid changes in odour towards the end of each sequence, are intended to surprise or be interpreted as comedic. The techniques used to store and reproduce specific smells is of some interest, however, but the tales it tells are not. The crew of the FC Mad Cat are left with an uncomfortable feeling that they may have unwittingly become immediately familiar with what certain gaseous byproducts of alien digestion smell like. However, Masada is unwilling to speculate as to why the box was dumped on this frozen hellscape of a planet. <laughs> I find it particularly amusing that the Mad Cat was the science ship that researched this one. Given that uh, the cat from from Red Dwarf, their holy book was a book that you read 
by by smelling the pages. I I find that perfect. But we just gained a massive wallop of society research, and uh, Masada gained a hundred uh, experience as well. But that society research will trickle it in and help us get our current project done a little bit faster, since society is j uh, joint last place in terms of the amount Market of research we're producing. Identified. Optical sensors isolate a cluster of shapes on the barren surface of Zeta Reticuli 3 that could be buildings. Very well, you can Special go ahead and research project that. Actualized. We have made first contact with a, a Dima Zanyan Marauders. Uh, it was Marauders after all. In nomadic civilization, they occupy a number of large space stations in and around the Sithonis Maelstrom system that house, uh, that house uh, sorry that house the bulk of their massive numbers in crowded and squalid conditions. Despite this, or perhaps because of it, they seem to have developed a strong martial culture. Life in the cold void has become second nature to them, and they are very adept at space warfare. There is no Dima Zanyan central government to speak of. Instead, they are divided into several different factions that vie endlessly with one another for resources and respect. Given their large population and the shipbuilding capability of their stations, this constant infighting is the only thing keeping them from growing into a significant threat to galactic peace. Uh, okay, I guess we should contact them. Hi! More Dwamax! What you want, foolish Dwamak? What happened to make your face look like that? Reactor accident? Vacuum exposure? Hi! Look at you! We are the... Dima Zanyan, we hunt Dwamak. If you come to Dima Zanyan turf, we make Dwamak stew. Not good for you, yes? Hi! Perhaps you know other Dwamaks? Perhaps you want them to be Dwamak stew? This can be arranged. Dima Zanyan not above fighting for Dwamaks against other Dwamaks, if price is right. Ah, a fellow, a fellow connoisseur of commerce. Well, I mean, it could be worse, I suppose, <laughs> though I'm not particularly happy about that. That, what are you saying about silly, you scallywag? I will end you. I will probably have to, one way or another, but uh, that doesn't need to happen just yet. As expected, the FC math machine has located the source of the transmission emanating from Ashaik 3. While the planet is otherwise seemingly untouched by alien hands, a lone monolith of some sleek, off-white mineral stands atop a hill in the southern hemisphere. It is... Uh, it is from within this monument that the signal emerges. The enclosure clearly built for longevity rather than resonance. Science Officer Plumus Mac has gone out of their way to establish the parameters for a special project that would decode the information the signal carries. Mm, an appropriate initiative, I'm thinking. Uh, monumental transmission. We have little to gain by listening to the dead. Ah, uh, there's loads of things to be gained from listening to the dead. Uh, raise the monument, find the trans- What? No! There is nothing to be gained from this. What if there are secrets that we could then sell on to other people or use to make better solutions for today? Yes, yes. We need to know what this thing is transmitting into the void. Situation Make it advanced. happen. Let's have a look. Uh, okay, go to. Now, what I've discovered is that whilst the initial anomaly might take a long time based on its level, once you've got the anomaly done, it's generally fairly quick. Oh, that was... Ah, oh, yes, we'll, we'll go there. Uh, it's generally fairly quick to research the result of that anomaly without too much trouble. Uh, at this point, I would like you to head over... Uh, I need a little bit more. Uh, actually, let's head in. I want you to get me some more minerals more than anything else. Please head there. Build a mining station. It'll cost me 100 minerals, but it'll give me an extra three per month, which is pretty good, I must say. Ugh, not good. Actually, can I have a look in here? Can I, can I establish... Any investment. We've previously encountered hostiles in the system. Yeah, I can't actually see them as planets, I don't think. Um, or can I? No, of good raiding target. We would like to hire a leader. Will you cease that infernal shrieking? <laughs> I was having a fine evening. And then you showed up. Dwamak. Hi! Oh, that made, went a little bit too high there. Clearly, I need some more tea. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, don't make communication. I just, I just wanted to bother you, really. I was hoping I could open a branch office, if truth be known. But, uh, alas, it doesn't seem that we can. Uh-oh, we have population that is unemployed. That is not good for our stability. No, no. Not good at all. Um, let's have a look at you. One void ferret worker is currently unemployed. 
that cannot be allowed to stand, I think. Uh, but... Special project oh, actualized. Are transmissions decoded? Science Officer Plumbersmack reports that the signal broadcast by the transmission beacon on Ashaik uh, 3 has been decoded. It is a memorial message decrying the loss of hundreds of lives in a battle millennia past. A stalwart alliance apparently fell victim to treachery and deceit, and a massive fleet wiped itself out before the enemy had even arrived, as ally turned on ally. Apparently, these decision uh, desiccated hulks were left in a place as floating grave markers, the crews having been destroyed by surgical strikes to weak points in their ship's hulls. Hmm. Calculate the wrecked fleet's trajectory and current position. Okay. Or study these records. Ooh, that is a lot of engineering output. But I think I'd like to know where that fleet went. It'd be interesting. It would give us something to to follow. Situation log revised. Okay. Drifting battlefield. Millennia ago, treachery saw a fleet of allied ships turn on each other. With the swift strikes to critical systems and known weak points in the hull designs, the formerly allied crews were wiped out with ruthless efficiency, supposedly leaving the depressurized hulks of the ships largely intact. We have gleaned enough in information to model a ship's graveyard slow drift through the cosmos. Track on map. Okay. Where, though? Oh! Poop, that's a long way away. Well, we've got a we've got a bit of a long, long-term journey to get all the way over there, and maybe we'll find something useful out of it. Or maybe not. Hmm. It's kind of gonna be gonna be a bit of a pain to get there, frankly. Now, what other things have we currently got to do? We've got to make first contact. Well we haven't got that one because we haven't met anyone yet. I need to increase the fleet some more. I think we need four more ships made right now. Let's head in. Shipyard. Four more Isham class ships. There we go. We'll use up all of our allies on that. Marvellous. That should help out a great deal. Upscaling complete. Hooray! We have finished building our new uh, new research lab. That should mean now that we've got some more specialists on the way. That is going to dig into our um, our consumer goods that is drastically increasing our research capabilities and that is definitely something we need to be doing. A lot of, actually. Uh, food? Hmm. Should probably look Upscaling at working complete. on that a little bit. I, I do think we've got a little bit more room on Neath, though. Have we really got... Oh, Future market right. survey complete. We have. We have got uh, exactly the right... Oh, no, no, what's happened? I was going to say, I thought there were two jobs, but it doesn't look like we've, we've got uh, a missing position. But what happened, of course, is that the moment there were, there were spe two specialist jobs, a worker upgraded their living conditions and took that job on. So now we're one shy of workers. But that's fine. We'll eventually get that sorted. Uh, you carry on. Survey this system, then survey that one. You're going to survey this one. Hmm. Actually, whatever you're doing... I think, yeah, I'll, I'll let you finish that for now. Uh, following that, once we've got our, our fleet correctly built up, we are not going to be able to tangle them with any fleet research that we're going to be able to build for quite some time, unfortunately. Physics research from our researchers is now up by 20%. That is amazing. We could increase the amount of energy credits we're getting from technicians by a fair old bit. Uh, research complexes. Now, the problem with these is they require 50... Uh, gases to make 50 exotic gases and one exotic gas upkeep but they give significantly more research jobs this is an upgrade for our current research buildings one that we don't need just yet i think getting some more energy credits in the bank would be a good move for us we've only got seven months on these that shouldn't be too bad but that's going to massively improve our engineering research which i'm very eager for for obvious reasons uh, Market outlier ooh. identified. There's significant scarring on the surface of the world in a Good. pattern that we now have a small but capable space fleet that should serve us well in the event of any unexpected hostile encounters. Oh, I don't know. That hostile encounter would be bad for us. Let us make this painfully clear. It would be really, really unwise for us to play around there. Uh, 
That looks like a nice planet, though. Let's have a look at you. You've got no special areas, but... Uh, decent amount of districts overall. Uh, we could... We could uh, colonize this place. I think that might be a wise move. Yes. I think we're going to have to to get out there. Unless something better presents itself. It's only one tile away from Neath. It isn't exactly the, the best for us, but... Any trade we produce over here will need a new station to gather or to upgrade the station Research that we've got at Neath. Which isn't uh, good for us right now. There we go. Engineering has increased. We could get more minerals. That would be very nice. Mining station output would be increased. That would also be pretty cool. Or afterburners if we really want them to. Uh, afterburners might not be bad. Gives us better sublight speed and better evasion. I wouldn't mind that on our, our Corvette. I think that would be very, very nice. It does use a chunky bit more power, though. Um, so we might want to... Well, we've already passed up the possibility of getting a better, be better power. Uh, unlock Starbase Building, the Nebula Refinery. By processing the dust clouds of a nebula, we are able to refine and extract valuable minerals. Hmm. Okay. Produces some minerals from there. That's actually pretty cool. Or I could just greatly increase our miners' production. I'm going to go for this one. Let's just increase what we already have. Alien Barracks. The silhouettes uh, discernible from orbit are indeed buildings, and closer inspection reveal them to be of an obvious martial nature. While abandoned for some time, though very recently on a galactic timescale, Science Officer Masada believes that secrets of alien tactics may yet be exhumed from beneath the dust that covers the decaying barracks and looted armories. A special project may be issued to study the remains. Acknowledged. Situation log revised. Very well. Let's go in there and get you to immediately check that out for me. Please and thank you. But we're getting through the research here a lot faster now. Thanks to our increases in survey speed. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing onto the surface of uh, Fianita 4. The massive script covers a large portion of the planet's upper hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. I approve. Truly, I do. Uh, I would kind of like you to go back here and research this special project actualized science officer masada's thorough xeno historical analysis of the military installation on zeta reticuli 3 has yielded few tangible results the base was constructed before the planet turned completely barren but it is unclear if its current inhospitality is the result of armed conflict or some more peaceful or even natural process what can be deduced of their strategies and tactics in armed conflict does not seem to have been far in advance of our own on the upside, Science Officer Masada uh, claims to have drawn much inspiration from the alien remnants. Oh, lots? Wow. Okay, let's uh, pause that there for a moment. Uh, I really would like you to... So we're already performing this order. Can't sign if it finds this anomaly. Routine, good. Well, hopefully you can take care of that. But let's go and have a look at uh, Masada. There we go. Military expertise. Fantastic. I approve of that enormously. On that note, it is time for us to get another science ship. As I mentioned earlier, we can have scientists do performing um, assisted research right from the beginning of the game. So there's really no reason not to. In fact, I'm tempted Upscaling to get a second complete. one so that we could really get out there and start looking for more, for more species to interact with. Right. And Verbis shall be FC. Oh, Moriarty. What an auspicious name. Fantastic. We've got a science vessel named Moriarty. Truly wondrous. Let us recruit a scientist. Now, I would. Hmm, lead a lifespan plus 25 years. That would be nice. But before I do that. Who's going to lead research? I'm busy investigating, leading research. We don't have anyone who has speciality. In field manipulation. I'm going to recruit you. And I'm currently working on engineering research. Physics research. Yeah, that's fine. You you go ahead. But let's check out our research at the moment. Just make sure that I've got the best people working on things. There we, there we go. For example, Lord Twifflebat. 
We would prefer someone here who understands field manipulation to an extreme degree. So for that reason, we're swapping you. Uh, also, I just realized. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You are not, in fact, a Valk, daughter of him. You are, as it happens, Feynor. There we go. Welcome, Feynor. Continue your research, please. And thank you. You will get a bonus there because you have the, the correct modifier for this particular type of research. You're going to get through that one so much faster. I don't believe we've got anyone. No. We don't have any, any other scientists who, who would be better in those fields. But now that it doesn't... We don't have a cap on it. It's just how much money we've got. If we've got the money to have multiple scientists, we should try and get some of every type of uh, scientific discipline just to make sure that we're always researching at the very, very fastest we can. Now, on that note, I could have the FC Moriarty here help out a little bit. Uh, where is Neith? Is yeah, we are. I could have you assist research. Oh, require no. There we are. That that would be why. Yes. Well, Truffle Bat, I require you to help me here with assisting research. Now, assisting research is just going to give us a, a bonus to the research production. If we have a quick look, 36, 28, 31. Once you research actually begin it. Actualized. Hmm. Let me pull you away for a second. I want to see how much that is. 36, 28, 31. Hmm. Does it not tell me? Well, this is the only, only one producing most of this. I guess entering orbit. Let's just make sure that's happening. Complete. I need to go and check on this first. We've got monthly unity plus two. Very good. Ah, there we go. Let's get society research sorted. I mean, it would be nice to get the farmers, but getting that little bit of extra society research would be super, super important to us. Are you going to start doing your your awesome stuff? Hmm. It appears that you are. Your assisting research, but it doesn't look like... Ah, there we go. Increased. By a little bit. It's good enough for me for now. As we get larger levels, that'll that'll really start to kick in. But we've got another science ship. The FC Da Filiris shall become the uh, Zarmax. There you go. And you're going to need a new leader. Uh, sure, we'll get uh, computing expertise for now, unless we've got something very specific for... Uh, no, we don't have anything specific for anomalies, so there we go. Let's get you in there. And also get you named. Gori, daughter of Jag. You are, in fact, Zephard. There you go. Well done, you. I would like you to head off in this direction and start surveying systems. We need to get as much information as quickly as we possibly can. Ah, glorious. We haven't got a very large empire yet, but we're, we're starting to pull in quite a lot of information. Uh, through hard work and expertise, scientist Masada has developed a new skill. Marvellous. What have you developed? Wow, you're actually becoming really, really good. Complete. I'll be honest. Survey speed plus 25. Again, you are one shy of your maximum level. This is... Genuinely pretty amazing. You're going to be tearing through this area. I don't think we can ever afford for you to not be a, a, a surveyor at this point. You're so specialized in it. We now know without a doubt that a thriving biosphere is not something unique to Neath. Both the scientific community and the public at large are eager to learn more about the various forms of alien life found throughout the galaxy. Efforts to catalogue the life forms we encounter are already underway, but our xenologi uh, xenobiologists have urged us to focus our planetary survey efforts on habitable, life-bearing worlds. A commendable initiative. Begin the Habitable World Survey event. We have more important matters. No, no, I don't need that uh, that influence. Commendable effort. Revised. Let's start. Uh, complete the construction of a mining station. You know what? I suppose I should name this ship as well. We don't have anyone captaining this ship, but it still deserves a name. You shall be the... Uh, let's see if I can get the accented. Yes, I can. Hooray! Ap Apostolo. I probably butchered your name there. I do apologize. Right, I would like you at this point. Hmm, we've got a bit of a bit of a question here. Where would we like to go? I'm thinking here. 
This needs to be the next planet we take. It's going to take me 75 influence, which is a massive shame because I did really want to use that on an edict. We have a healthcare campaign, increase our population growth, recycling campaign, drop up consumer goods, education campaign, leader experience game would be nice. I really want research grants though. I really want research grants. That's going to be something we're going to have to wait on. Let's check out our the policies, policies for now. The covers government policies, which have wide-ranging effects on how our empire is run. Very well. Don't show again. Our war philosophy is unrestricted war, uh, wars. We can have indiscriminate bombardment. We prohibit resettlement. Uh, first contact is peaceful. Uh, that's fine. Initial border status should be open. I mean, we want to trade. Food policy. Dietary balance. Okay. Uh, organic pops have normal food use and growth speeds. Strict or rationing. In times of need, we must all sacrifice for the greater good. What is a little starvation now when our glorious future awaits? Or nutritional plentitude. Biological pop happiness plus 5. Pop food upkeep plus 25%. But, ooh, that's nice. It is the fundamental right of each of our citizens to enter hibernation with a full digestive organ. Easy access to plentiful nutrition fare will be the fuel that spurs our growth amongst the stars. I agree. But uh, we're going to have to wait on that one. Economic policy. Uh, we've got a mixed economy currently. Uh, the, to commit ourselves fully to either war or peace is to restrict ourselves to a narrow view. We must be ready for whatever the future may hold. Uh, monthly consumer goods down by 25%. Monthly alloy up by 25, uh, 15%. Or... Hmm, dropping our alloys by one quarter would be a bit rough and we'd gain more consumer goods honestly that's probably a little bit better for what we need but mm, we'll see wealth creation consumer benefits each collected trade value earns us some energy and consumer goods or marketplace of ideas trade value earns us oh so basically we can use trade value to make just money or some money and unity. That sounds good. Profits and taxes must take second place to improving the lives of our citizens. We should focus our trade efforts towards manufacture and distribution of everyday necessities. I actually think that this is probably more important to us, though. So I am going to uh, grab that one. Uh, do you wish to change? Yes. Let's change that policy for now. That should help out a little bit. Robotic workers are allowed. Refugees are welcome. Population controls... Um... I don't want to. To reproduce and propagate their species is an inalienable right of all of our citizens. Well, for now, it is. Slavery prohibited. The enslavement of sapient beings is an abomination and will not be tolerated within our empire. Slaves don't buy things. They're not allowed to own things. How can they purchase the solutions of tomorrow today if we don't let them buy things? No to slavery. And purging populate Dead people don't buy things. Though living people buy things for dead people. Hmm. Uh, hmm. We will need to think on this one a little bit more. But for now, I'm happy with that change in our policies. Hopefully that will result in a little bit of an increase over time. What was previously thought to be an assorted mountain in the southern hemisphere of Sheik 2 have been identified as the massive skeletal remains of a single colossal alien life form. The bones have been dated as 3.4 billion years old, but our scientists have ruled out that Ashik 2 could have supported life on that scale at any point in the planet's history. Science officer Plumus Mac has prepared a special research project to delve further into this mystery. Situation log Fascinating. Revised. Truly. Let's get you having a look at that, please. I know that it's not letting me... As a result, I'm not getting as much surveying then as quickly as I would like, but, you know, it's a thing that's happening. Ah, uh, alas. So much money is now gone. Uh, oops. We we may need to... <laughs> yeah, all of that trade value. Outlier Ouch. identified. Unusual reading suggests... Yes, I know. Rate. It's pretty bad, Last isn't it? Last month's budget report makes for some grim reading. It does. It does. Uh, unusual reading suggests there may be more to this desolate world than meets the eye. Fair enough. Go ahead and research it. We recovered the artifacts from an ancient alien civilization on Jonas 3. Incredibly, the civilization, which apparently referred to itself as the Cybrex, seems to have been made up of machines that were linked together in some sort of collective consciousness. The age of the artifacts indicate they were active some 600,000 years ago. In this portion of the galaxy, at least, 
but we have learned nothing of their exact origins. According to a par partial data fragment that our scientists managed to extract from one of the artifacts, the Cybrax at some point launched a crusade to destroy all sapient organic life in the galaxy for reasons unknown. Situation log revised. How terrifying. Okay, so precursors. We have this, uh, recovered the artifacts from the Cybrax. They would blah, blah, blah. If we can find enough relics from their civilization, it may be possible to pinpoint the location of their homeworld. Okay, we've got six of those that we need to find. We also desperately need to start generating more money. So, with that in mind, let's go ahead and uh, build a new generator district. And I may shuffle our, our population around a little bit to encourage the, uh, the use of those jobs there to generate some more, more cash. Now, research station output would be nice. Research alternatives would be nice. We are very close to one of our scientists being on their, their level cap. How much are we producing, though, from outposts? Bases 10. Well, it's actually quite a... Station, sorry, 5. Uh, base 10. Yeah, we're barely producing any from outposts. Only 5. And that's only in physics. So for now, I would say it would be better for us to go here and grab that one instead. But we do need to quite badly start sorting out our, our money matters. You go Special ahead and dock actualized. Now. After continued studies of the massive skeletal remains found on Nashik 2, Science Officer Plumber Smack has concluded that the creature served as some kind of organic starship. Much smaller bones from at least three separate species were found within the larger skeleton, and we assume these came from members of the crew. For unknown reasons, this organic starship suffered catastrophic damage and crash landed on Nashik 2. While we cannot begin to understand the biological engineering necessary to grow a starship like this, the study of these bones alone has substantially advanced our knowledge. Wow. Okay, Ajik is, is becoming amazingly good. We need to be there. Quite desperately, actually. Uh, right, let's pause that there. Plumber Smack is leveled up to skill level 3. And Director Siri is leveled up as well. Marvellous. Let's uh, pull down our deficit a tiny bit. Uh, we've got a f an anomaly over there that I am hoping that we are currently studying. It might not be the case, though. Uh, go ahead. Survey that system then for now. But maybe I should have Moriarty head out and start serving as well, actually. Because we're not really gaining that much of a bonus for research. Well, no. No, I think we are gaining a decent amount of bonus from, from research at the moment. But once we've got this place, it's not going to give us any energy, Excellent. which is a shame. But it will we be useful. We should now be ready to here. extend our great civilization to a second world. This will require the construction of a colony ship. Very well. We have encountered some form of alien vessel in the Ulus system. These strange objects have been flagged as beta aliens until we can learn more about them. We should proceed with caution. Interesting. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. We begin right away. Have we got any stored research for you? No, unfortunately. But let's have a look in here. Okay, that is not uh, an alien race. Uh, well, I mean it is, but uh, it's not one that we can interact with. Much to my dismay. Uh, oh, well. Unfortunately, that, that star there... Well, I, actually, that entire section is locked off from us unless we can approach it from the rear. Which would be good if we could make that happen, but for now, unlikely. Problem here is if I build too many um, ships, that's going to cause us some issues. Some pretty big issues, actually. Uh, let's have a look at this. We build a colony ship. I think we can make that happen. We're going to go through the Expansions Planner, though. In the Expansion Planner, we find nearby habitable planets that may present opportunities for colonization. Very well. We can build colony ships and issue them orders directly from this screen. Planets must be surveyed and any anomalies found on the planet must have been researched before the planet can be colonized. That's okay. So, our planet here, no rare deposits. 19 size, though, which is pretty good. Distance, um... It's not too bad. It's awful for mining, but not too bad for, for generation of, of power. Um, I think we do want to colonize it. It's the only option we have, so let's select it. We need 200 food. We need 200 alloys. We don't have that. We need 200 consumer goods. Okay, well, we just need to wait 
on the alloys. And we are producing alloys at a reasonable pace right now. What I can do, though, is I can build one research station. It will cost me one energy, but will give me three society and three engineering research. And honestly, right now, that is such a good trade. Such a good Evading trade for us. competitive fleet. Yes, that is wise. Don't, don't fight with strange aliens, please. Uh, it's fine. Everything is is moving along somewhat well. Upscaling complete. Hooray! Neath has finished its construction queue. Let's go into Neath and make sure that the right people are working in the right jobs. Right, so we've got a couple of technical positions now. So let's open this up. Got two or four technicians. I do not want you there. I would like... Yeah, you've already grabbed that job. Good. And you as well. Each one of these will produce 4.3. We still need a little bit more going on Upscaling there. Upscaling complete. Just a little bit more. So, with that then, let's get a, a second district. I'm uh, going to need another... Oh, surely I should be able to build that. Hmm. Oh, no, it's saying I'm lacking it, not that that's the amount a I need. The system has been Very surveyed. Well. Thank you. Uh, you can move on to that system since we've got... Oh, are you not heading there anymore? Very well. Head on over. There we go. Still won't quite give us enough, but we'll get a little closer. And that is the main thing. Primordial soup. Nestled in sheltered pockets across Junas 3A's surface is a rich sludge of simple organic compounds that our researchers believe could be a hotbed for... I, uh, Ibiogenesis, or abiogenesis, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. The spontaneous formation of organic life from lifeless matter. Journalist, uh, sorry, Jonas 3A has an unusually thick atmosphere for a barren rock, which could make it hospitable for simple life forms. Although this present, uh, presents a unique opportunity to study what could be the early stage of the origin of life, it would be best to set our expectations low, as it may still be millions of years before it evolves naturally on Jonas 3A, if at all. Well, you know, it's still still useful information. I approve of it. Okay. All right, we're still... We're hemorrhaging credits, but we'll eventually get there, I'm sure. I could probably just switch back, but... Mm, I think we're okay for the time being. Neath needs a chunk more minerals before I can get more technical Outlier positions identified. there. Our ship sensors are picking up an unexplained pattern of interference. In our attempts systems. to establish communications stand testament to our technological ingenuity, but results are lacking. It is likely that the other party possesses only an animal level of intelligence, if any at all. Alas. Okay, well, we could made first contact at least. An investigation into a pe uh, peculiar cluster of debris and space dust has yielded surprising results. It is a particular cloud bristling with a powerful charge of unknown origin that has no business exhibiting simple reflex actions, let alone movements with purpose. And yet it does. There is something undeniably ominous about the hazy subject of the relayed video feed. Perhaps there are things in the universe we should not tangle with. Let us watch, but not interfere with it. Okay, cloud study. Situation log revised. Uh, we have... that's fine. Uh, are we close to our physics research right now? Seven months away, and it will give us energy credits. So I'm going to hold on to that one, because we do need the energy credits. Once that, that uh, research is complete, we should be out of the hole that we've dug ourselves into. Uh, but on the plus side, so many consumer goods. Hooray! Research for millennia. Sonified science. The FC Mad Cat crew has succeeded in isolating a signal embedded within an unusual pattern of interference in the Oprik system. The signal is a song a complex sonification of an advanced mathematical equation, to be precise, and one that science officer Masada cannot seem to get out of her, their head. Who or what may have composed this song remains unknown, though its complexity infers an incredible level of technological sophistication regarding subspace harmonics. The signal's geodisks suggest a point of origin from outside of our galaxy. Curious. Marvellous. Look at all that research. Oh, good times. We may yet be out of this little little hole we've got ourselves into very, very soon, in fact. Very soon indeed. Uh, Potential Neath? market survey completed. Probably. Research actualized. Ah, there we go. Fantastic. And this may have fixed our problem. And if not, then we could go for that. Hmm. The survey speed and automatic exploration are amazing. 
because it really, really doubles down on what we're trying to do, and that is explore as fast as we can. Um, but research speed, that is also really quite tempting. Unlocks the edict, capacity overload. And the energy grid building, which would uh, give us technical jobs and increase the energy credits from technicians on the planet. That's a pretty good one. We have got someone who could do either of these. So, for the time being, yes. We're going to go with survey speed. I want to double down on that. I think we're going to be out of the... Uh, out of the... 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 The whole of energy credits very soon. Zarmat, let's get you working on this one. There we go. And Moriarty, nope. There we go. I want... Uh, Feynor, could you please take the helm of the FC Zarmats for me. Right, there we go. So with that done, we are now going to go ahead and begin the research of Cloud Study. I'm not sure what it's going to give us. I forget, it's been a while since uh, I last played. Market outlier oh. identified. Okay, by chance we stumbled upon a taint... Uh, sorry, <laughs> a taint alien signal heresy. No, 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 that's wrong game. Uh, a faint alien signal during the survey of this planet. The source appears to be a small object in orbit. The signal contains no message. Could it be a distress transponder? I think it's worth researching. Get to it, Masada. Please and thank you. A system has been surveyed. Marvelous. We've also got some trade value over there. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. Continue out. And we'll see where we can get to next. Uh, we haven't seen too much trade value around. Um, these two systems are not particularly attractive to me at the moment. An abandoned life pod was detected in the close orbit of Oprik. Uh, four. It covered in scorch marks, presumably from when the pod's mothership exploded, and preliminary scans suggest it was built more than 5,000 years ago. The crew of the FC Madcat managed to open the pod, revealing the withered remains of a reptilian alien clad in a resplendent uniform. Clutched in one of its claws is a small picture of another individual from the same race, possibly a mate or a revered leader. There we are, we've got some uh, society research from that. Marvellous. Now, with all of this flowing into the coffers, are we in a position now? Yes, we should be. To go ahead and get. Uh, it really hasn't improved things that much, really, has it? Um, I was hoping that that would be significantly better, but we'll see. I want this planet colonized, please. Colonize. You should be able to. Let's get our second colony on the go. A chic prime! No, 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 no. This shall be... Let's have a look. Shall be Blue Rose Undertaker. Uh, it'll be Blue Rose... Undertaking. No, Undertakings? Yes, Undertakings. That's kind of commercial. Shush. It'll work. Uh, that, that'll do. It'll... We'll build it up to produce uh, some additional material there. Duke Station is already preparing... The colony Outlier ship. Identified. Uh, by chance, we stumbled upon a faint alien signal during the survey of this planet. The open uh, source appears. Potential market Oops. survey completed. Okay. Uh, atmospheric reads of I do not match simulated projections. Go ahead and check that out. There's a lot of things going on in there. My goodness. Right down here, though. Signal during the survey of this planet. The source appears to be a small object in orbit. Go ahead and research. And Moriarty, you continue to help out there with the research as you can. And I think that should be everything we need to do. Uh, we are going to need one more district here. So go ahead. Let's get that going. And then we'll shuffle around people as needed. We don't really want to drop our minerals too much. But at the moment, it, it's, not, it's not terrible. Immense ragged planes of shadow drift across a prick one's face. They are cast not by clouds, but by sheets of organic material drifting through the upper layers of the atmosphere, hinged, or rather jointed, to allow for a small degree of articulation. Science Officer Masada is as yet unwilling to say whether these things are flora or fauna, or what purpose, possible purpose, if any, their elaborate shadow casting might serve. Uh, okay, it's just added an extra bit there. Um, really? Can you not? Why not? 
Uh, we need... Uh, yeah, go ahead. We need a little bit more minerals coming in. The mummified remains of a single individual belonging to a previously unknown mammalian species have been found drifting in high orbit over Sismac 2. The being is dressed in what appears to be a flight suit, complete with a helmet, and may be a fighter pilot that ejected in some ancient battle, only to be forgotten and left behind. A study of the corpse has pro provided some interesting data. Very well, a tragic fate, to be sure. Uh, Zephard has leveled up to level 2, well done, as has Feynor. Marvellous work, people. Very, very pleased with you. Continue. That is going to be a great system to take. That is a lot of energy credits there. A great deal of energy credits that I would like to have as my Research energy credits. Actualized. Very well. A system has been surveyed. Oops. Right. Minerals coming in a little bit better. Fantastic. Now, if we take powered exoskeletons, the minerals from jobs would increase by 5%, which is pretty solid. Planet build speed increased. I don't think that one's necessary for us. Coil gun would increase the, the power of our fleet. And right now we've been pretty much entirely focused on our research and expansion. So I'm thinking it's probably a good idea to do this. So yeah, we're going to go for coil guns and upgrade our weapon systems a little bit. Let's check in on cloud study. Uh, it's got another 28 months to go there. Uh, Mad Cat, what's up over here? Let's get rid of these. And let's have a look down here. Our initial scans have caught an irregular signal reminiscent of our own distress patterns. Very well. Begin the research. But what is Mad Cat doing? Exactly. No orders. Really? Okay, well, uh, let's get on with some more work. I would like Mad Cat to head out here. We w we can see now that this does connect, which is what we want. Ultimately, we want to try and get over there. And I am going to try and make a beeline for it, if we can. But we're going to be moving Upscaling sensibly. Complete. I'm not just going to send Mad Cat out there and just have them be eaten by some sort of space The monster. colonists have all been transferred to the new colony ship. And her captain reports all systems go. A momentous day, for sure. Indeed. Ah, we're growing. We, we're going to have offices on another world. This is the first for Farrakorp. Though, not not something that we, we ever thought wouldn't happen. We always knew that we, we were destined for greater things than a single planet. We just needed the right, the, the right, the right uh, foundations to lay our newest home. And I would very much like it if we could gather... Oh, wow, actual allies. Okay, this is becoming a very attractive location. If we can get a, a a station over there, we'll start ferrying trade goods all the way back to Nice. That would be fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, with these minerals... We have oh, a colony ship, okay, not bad. and we have found at least one suitable candidate for a permanent extrasolar outpost. I see no reason to delay further. Very well. Let's establish our first colony. We will do. Situation log updated. Also, our first faction. A new faction has recently been gaining traction in the internal polit uh, political landscape of the Farrakorp Free Traders. Led by Governor Travis, they call themselves the Freedom Group. Their members work for equality and justice for all denizens of our empire. A disgruntled faction will be a source of trouble, but one that approves of the government's actions could prove useful. Well, let's have a quick, the quick look. The faction screen here. gives an overview of the populace's political leanings. Be aware that shifts in the socio-political climate may give rise to factions. Details on faction sizes, attractiveness to our pops, and how content they are can also be found here. Okay. Factions have issues that are important to their overall approval. And our policies and actions as a nation may displease or please these groupings, providing an increased boost to influence generation. The strength of factions and then the nature of their issues can change along with our circumstances, but keep in mind that the happiness of a pop can be affected by the approval of the faction it belongs to. We can also manage factions to manipulate the relationship between the faction and the state, even going so far as embracing the ethos of a strong faction. Very well. We are doing pretty bloody good already. It's got 12 people out of our 33, so that's actually quite a sizable amount of our population is there. Um, okay, total faction support, 100%. Oh, okay, excellent. 
Uh, Anti-stratification. Letting any denizen of our empire live in a stratified economy will greatly displease the freedom group. No current effect on faction approval. But reproductive freedoms, that's good. Free movement, that's good. Anti-autocratic, also good. Marvellous, we are winning. We are winning accidentally. That's honestly the, some of the best ways to win. Uh, okay, so with that, we have found a new anomaly over here. Uh, we're currently researching. We'll get rid of that then. Duke Starbase has finished construction of our colony ship, which should be on its way. It is on its way. Although, over here, we will have uh, establishing the colony. We've already, because we used the expansion planner, that's already been, been designated, so it's on its way to the correct location, which is grand. And we've finished construction of our station. Now, unfortunately, that has resulted in, uh, in a fair bit of extra loss of energy. Yeah, that sucks. But, you know, it's a thing. Traditions available. Leader experience gain increased by 25%. A leader level cap increased by 1. Research station output. Still not getting much from that. Pops working with research. Have their upkeep reduced by 20%. That would be quite nice. But we're going to go with this one next. And we're going to get our uh, level cap for all leaders increased a little bit. That would be very, very useful for us. The signal we intercepted was a distress signal from a ship in orbit around Bunda 3A. The ship is not giving off any heat signatures and seems to be drifting. A special project has been issued to investigate what has happened to the crew. Intriguing. Or, we don't have time for this. No, no, it's intriguing. Situation log revised. Let's go and have a look at that. Derelict ship available. Uh, go ahead and research that, please. It'll be finished in 20 days. It's going to be finished in 25 months. There. Uh, oh, well. Now, I'm very tempted to go ahead and expand out. Now, the initial outpost costs us nothing to do. Just alloys and, and some influence, of which we've got significant amounts. So we're going to go out there. We're going to establish this and immediately spend however many minerals are necessary to get hold of some of this energy because we desperately, desperately need it. And on that note, let's go and have a look at edicts. We don't have the energy to start these, but research grants would be quite awesome, I think. So, yeah, we're going to spend 180 influence, pretty much all of our remaining influence, to get a research grant active that is going to give us an extra 10% on all of our research. Now, that obviously would be better if we Special had project more actualized. research to, as a base to, to give the 10% to. But right now in the early game, every point of research actually matters. Later on, uh, you know... <laughs> It wouldn't. It would be a drop in an especially enormous ocean, but for the time time being, it's like a drop in a glass of water. The ship in orbit around Bunda 3A was not abandoned. The crew was alive, but not well, influenced by some sort of brain parasite. With the help of our scientists, they could easily be cured. Uh, why would I let them perish? No, establish contact with the aliens. You have made ah. first contact with an alien empire. These fascinating beings appear to have mastered spaceflight, just as we have. We should strive to learn more about them. We should. By the way, depending on your your civilization's ap approach to aliens, Veer will talk in a very different way about first contact, and it's quite amusing, the differences. Okay, this option was blah, blah, blah. Uh, strategic resource information. We have learned of a new strategic resource encountered on Bitrus 2 in the territories of Finu Enlightened Kingdom. Oh, that's, this would be you guys. Once you discover someone, uh, then... As a result, you know of all of the strategic resources in their territory. Okay, so, incoming transmission. Fino Enlightened Kingdom. Elective Monarchy. Erudite Explorers. Erudite Explorers value exploration and discovery process above all other things. They will gladly trade for the knowledge they seek, but they are not above taking it by force if it proves necessary. They are fanatic authoritarians and materialists. First contact with the Fenu Enlightened Kingdom. I speak on behalf of the Fenu Enlightened Kingdom, and I have been authorized to bring you greetings. As long as you stay out of our internal affairs and treat our great leader, High King uh, Shenblur, with reverence, I see no reason for our diplomatic relations to sour. Um, okay, well, we we want to just spread our corporate corporate vibes everywhere. Siri speaks on behalf of the Farakor people. We could learn much from each other. Uh, cooperation will surely benefit us all. Uh, yes, we're going to go with that one. All right, let's have a look at you. Oh, you're very close to where I want to be. Now. Let's have a look here. Strategic resource information. We've discovered a strategic resource. Let's have a look at it. What is it? Over here. Volatile moats. 
These uh, petronatural particles contain a tremendous amount of energy which could be exploited in energy production as fuel or even as explosives. Marvelous. Can I get a branch office over here? The diplomacy screen is where we communicate with other civilizations. Here we can declare war, form alliances, and implement trade deals with our neighbors, amongst other things. Okay, don't show again for now. Let's have a quick look at what options are there. Invite someone federation, insult, offer tribute. These we can't do at all because we're for some reason we don't don't qualify. Close borders, guarantee independence, form a commercial pact, form a commercial pact with this empire. This will increase the value of both empires' trade networks. Research agreement, which would actually be pretty awesome. Is of country type default. Fino and Latin Kingdom is of country type default. Form non-aggression pact, form defense pact, declare rivalry, offer trade deal, make claims, or declare war. What I really want to do, more than anything really, is stick branch offices on all of your planets and get you to stop buying my stuff. Can I do this? Is it a thing that I can do? Corporate. Yes. Costs so much though. Oh my lord. Okay. Distance 190% because it's so far away. We must have a commercial pact or be in a federation with the owner of this planet in order to establish a branch office here. Well, commercial pact is where we're going then. And it would uh, get us a little bit of money. Uh, branch office value is the base amount of energy credits income that can be gained from establishing a branch office here and is determined by the total trade value of the planet. Okay, well, we'll, we'll pick out a couple of places. Is this one even better? I hope so. No. That one's terrible. All right, well, we might not be setting up a branch office with you anytime soon, but you're near to something that I want, so we're probably going to be uh, be friends, or at least I certainly hope so. But I think that's a good place to wrap up this episode. We have met not one, but two new empires, only one of which is a real empire. The other one is just a scallywag, just just waiting to to show their hand that is full of scallywag cards. Not not a single not a single dapper card is in the Marauder deck. Not not a one. Ah, trust us to be right next to the Marauders. But if anyone can pass it for the Marauders, it's going to be Space Ferrets. Let's be honest with ourselves. Or Void Ferrets, as they prefer to be known. But that's going to be it from me. I really do hope you've enjoyed today's episode and will be joining me for the next. But until then, and as always, do take care.